Welcome to this video tutorial for Automobilista 2 Content Manager version 0.2. I'm going to explain what the software does and how to install and use it. This video is divided into sections, so feel free to skip forward to a relevant part if you already know what you're after. Let's spend a moment introducing this tool for everyone that hasn't used it before. Content Manager aims to let users customize the game mainly through third-party content, custom AI and liveries. Since it is in the early stages of development, it can only install mods. Let's download and install the software now. We are going to download it from REST department, link in the description of the video. While it downloads, let me show you that there is a user guide on the main page. In particular, it contains a link to join the Discord server, where you can ask for help. When you join, make sure to read the welcome channel, as it describes where and how to ask for help. From this version, the content manager comes with an installer. If you're upgrading from a 0.1 release, you can simply install the new version and delete the old folder, but be sure to save the old configuration if you change it. The installer is contained in the downloaded archive. If Windows Defender pops up with a warning that the developer cannot be verified, you'll have to open the More Info panel and press Run anyway. Read the license if it's the first time you install it and tick the acceptance checkbox, then Next again. In this screen, you can choose where to install the software and which components to include. The installation comes pre-configured for most users that would only have to press next. The shortcuts for the beta version are disabled by default. If you are a member of the Paddock Club, you can select those to be able to install mods on the beta version without further configuration. There is also the option to install the command line version of the software that most users won't need. In this case, I'll proceed with the default installation. Next, and then install. Windows will ask you for confirmation and after a short wait, the software will be installed. If the correct .NET runtime is not installed, at launch you'll see a pop-up with a direct installation link. Once downloaded, we'll execute the installer and it will install what's needed. The content manager will now start without errors. For new users, AMS2CM will open on an empty list, meaning that there are no mods installed or available. Otherwise, the list will show the currently installed and enabled mods. Mind that if upgrading from a version earlier than the previous 0.1.8, the first run will display duplicate mods. If that's the case, it will fix itself the first time mods are installed or uninstalled. We can add mods with a simple drag and drop onto the program window. The checkboxes on the second column determine which mods will be installed the next time we press apply and are ticked by default. Now that the installation is complete, we can see that the first column shows what mods are currently installed. If we start the game, we'll see those mods available. The game must be closed when we apply any change. Let's see what happens if we press the apply button without closing the game. For any error due to the installation, the progress bar will go red and the detail window will open. We can now see what is the reason for the error, in this case telling us that the game is running. Let's add some more mods, this time using the context menu. Right click, select add and choose one or more mods. We can enable or disable them either individually or with multiple selection. Shift key to select the range. We can see what is selected from the little markers on the left or control to select or unselect individual lines. Then right click to bring up the context menu and choose disable. If we press apply now, only the enable mods will be installed. We can also see the logs of what is happening by opening the detail panel.
A quick way of selecting all mods is by pressing Ctrl A. Then once selected, we can bring up the context menu as before, this time we'll select Enable instead. It's quite a few mods, so it will take a minute to install them all. Let's explore what happens if we press the Abort button before it's completed. The progress bar turns yellow, signaling that it's trying to get to a stable point to terminate installation. If we open the details window, we can see that it stopped cleanly before installing all mods. Let's see how we can remove a mod from those available to the content manager. We can drag and drop one or more mod from the list into the file system. This could be a directory or even the recycle bin. We can also select them like before and either press the delete key or selecting delete from the context menu. If they are installed, they will still appear, but we won't be able to enable them anymore. They will also disappear once uninstalled. To uninstall all mods, but without installing those enabled, we can select the Uninstall All option on the drop-down menu of the Apply button. We can now see that once uninstalled, the deleted mods have been removed from the list. This concludes the video guide. See you all on the Discord server and thanks for watching.